Welcome to video number two in the series of energy vampires and dream killers and how to get them out of your life. Video number one was about how to know when you're being victimized by an energy vampire or dream killing energy. Number two is how to get them out of your life. The five ways. Number one, you must survey the damage. You know how when your house catches on fire and they send out the, the insurance folks who then take whatever they got to do to the underwriters to the underwriters to decide whether or not they're going to take care of your claim. Somebody comes out and they look. They come out with a pencil and paper and they take down everything that's going on, every single detail. That's what you have to do. It's not enough people to sit in your mind and say, I'm done with them. How many times have we been done with someone only to let them back in, right? You need proof. You need evidence of the collateral damage and the calamity the skeletons and bones that they have left in your life. When I say survey the damage, I mean get out, buy yourself the most beautiful journal with the beautiful lock on it and the beautiful pictures of the, 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 the peacocks, the turkeys, whatever. Something totally beautiful. And you've got to write down what you have lost as a result of this individual. Every single big purchase, every single, if you sent them on vacation and took them somewhere and they made a mess out of that, uh, the time you paid the bills here, the time you helped with that, all the cash app and every way under the sun that these people have been a financial dirge on your life, you got to write it down. You got to write down the amount of time that you have lost in your life. And the time, when I talk about the time, people, time is more precious than money could ever be time is a finite resource and to waste it on someone who is infinitely dysfunctional. See, time is finite, but we waste it on someone who is infinitely dysfunctional. No end to that, but there's an end to our time and there's an end to our resources, right? So you've got to survey how much time have you wasted on them because the time you waste on them is the time you have not spent developing your life. These people have taken you off your life purpose. So you've got to survey the time and other resources, efforting, um, other things that have taken a hit. Perhaps your self-esteem has taken a hit while you were fooling around with this person or while you invited this so-called charlatan of a friend into your life to try to help them and nurse them back to help. And you look back up at yourself and hell, you feeling worse than, than they came to you. So you've got to survey the damage. Number two. The second thing that you must do is to make a decision with absolute certainty and resolve. You've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am ready to move on past this rascal, past this joker. It is time out for this. You cannot go into this half-heartedly and expect to be successful and be waffling. It ain't going to work. you got to be so damn tired and so fed up. What is it that they say? Tired of being tired. You got to be tired of being tired. Maybe you've had a dark soul of the night. Okay? Whatever it is, you've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt why you are doing this and why this is the right decision for you. And the best way to know that is to connect it with the loss that you have incurred at the hands of these dream killers and energy vampires. Number three. This is very important, and this is where we fail to shine as these wonderful, creative, manifesting beings. You have got to examine what you did to create this situation. What kind of karmic debris did you have that allowed you to attract these little monsters into your life and allow them to suck on your blood and take your life force energy away? Very seriously, Everything that occurs in our reality is something that we have created. You've got to accept responsibility for that. What I'm asking you to do is to look at the pattern. Look at the pattern that has allowed this to manifest itself in your life. Because for sure, when someone does you in like this, it ain't the first time. But it won't be the last time either if you don't acknowledge and take responsibility for what you did and how you let yourself down in order to create this situation and allow it to fester and thrive in your life. So you've got to go and do some shadow work. 
You've got to figure out what it was were the lessons. What were the lessons that you needed to have learned through bringing this person in your life? Because the bottom line is you got to clean this stuff up. You got to heal this energy. If it continues to resonate in your arc field, you're going to keep attracting. <laughs> you're going to keep attracting these kind of crazy, crazy relationships. Now, before we get into the good part, okay? Now, you'd have done one, two, and three before you even had the conversation with the person. Don't do two before four. I mean, two before one, and then go try to do four and cut them off. Because, uh, before you do number one, if you do it out of order, it's going to be an emotional reaction, and you'll be back in your comfort zone with this individual, sucking your blood before you know it. You have got to cut them off now. Here comes the fun part. But remember, you've built up to this. You're doing this with a sense of resolve. Cutting them off means you don't take calls from them anymore. There is no need to explain to them why you are cutting them off necessarily. It depends on the circumstances. If this has been a repeat pattern over and over and over, and you're just sick and doggone tired of it, there's no need to say the same thing you've been saying for the last however long it's been because you know this has been going on for some time. You didn't get to where you are today by not working hard to get there. And you didn't get where you are today by them having had this situation or put this state of trial and tribulation on you, this belia on your back out of nowhere. You got here through great effort and they got you there through their great effort. So this is not the first time. So there really is no reason to have to go back and say the same thing over and over and over. You have to come hard with resolve and you get, got to cut them off. When I say cut them off, I mean, if you got to change the number, change the number. If you don't change the number, block the calls and don't allow anything to make you pick up that phone. If you pick up that phone, they got you. If you pick up the phone, if you respond to a text, if you respond to an email, if you don't block the emails, text, social media, all that, you let some other friend come in and tell you, oh, such and such said, told me to, uh, 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 no, 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 no. Stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> so this is where you cut them off. They now become the person who shall remain nameless. Okay, the person who shall remain nameless. You speak of them no more. You no longer relive the trauma of the drama that they have brought into your life. You let them go. And as TJ, T, TJ Jakes or TD Jakes, I forget his name. I saw a video last uh, March or April. My daughter turned me on to and he said, give them the gift of goodbye. Praise God, hallelujah, however the language is that you, alhamdulillah, whatever it is. Give them the gift of goodbye. Let them go and be glad that they are gone because they no longer resonate with you and you are now in a pathway of ascension, which means you've got to leave this behind and you've got to, like Sade said, wash them off your skin. Wash them off your skin and cut them loose and you don't have time for them anymore. And that brings me to the fifth and final Fifth and final, can you guess what it is? The fifth and final thing that you must do, and this is really important. This is where we sometimes uh, end up looking back. And you know, you can't move forward looking back, right? Forward is that way, this way. You have to be prepared for those days where your heartstrings will be pulling at you. Okay, because if this is something that you've been nurturing for a while, nine times out of ten, there's a serious emotional attachment, albeit a negative attachment. It's an emotional attachment. And although you are garnering your, resor your resolve and you're strong in what it is you want to do, you're still a human being as well. And there will come days where you won't be as strong. So you have got to be prepared for the days where you feel sad or where you miss this person and maybe you decide you weren't thinking about them and you listen on driving down the street and you listen to some crazy song, make it last forever or whatever it is. Only you can make me happy, whatever it is. And it takes you back. That's why one of my other 
in one of my other videos about how to get your ex out of your life, I tell you to stop listening to music. Listen to a higher vibrational frequency because that music will be the first thing to take you right back down to the lower chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. And you'll be right back where you started. So remember, be prepared for these days. Keep emotional triggers away from you. Gifts and things they gave you. Get the pictures off the phone. Okay, the, the, if they gave you, came into your house and left the crumbs behind and, and things to, that would be a source of memory, you've got to get this stuff out of your space, out of sight, out of mind. Okay, in sight, in mind, right? So you have one to mind. Okay, and you have to, you have to put your blinders on and you got to be really serious about this. You got to have a 12-step a plan for yourself. What am I going to do when I start thinking about this person? Okay, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call Mr. Charlie. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call Rashida. I'm going to go out for a run. I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to go have some ice cream. I'm going to stop, wait, and think. I'm not going to respond on impulse, Okay. If you do, you will undo everything else that you did and all you would find yourself in is in a state of being further in the grips of this sick individual that you've made the choice to allow to re-enter your life. Keep them away. They are like the plague. But you must be preventive rather than reactionary. Reactionary people are always in breakdown maintenance. Things all break down, things get out of hand, and then all of a sudden you got to come back and fix it. You want to be preventive. This thing has taken a toll on your life. It has sapped your life force energy. It has taken you off your life purpose. It has really bankrupt you in so many ways. So please go through the steps one through five in order. Let me know how it works out. If there's something else you want to talk about, if there's a situation you want to share, let me know. Again, I appreciate your love, your likes, your subscribes, and your shares. You're with Tunisia Ali of Butterfly Transformations. If you're interested in energy work, spiritual mentoring, life coaching, tarot reading, whatever it is, you can reach me at butterflytransformations.com or hidayareiki.com. Information is in the subscription. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. You are a beautiful butterfly and a perfect little person. And I'm sending out much love to you. Join the evolution.